Hey, shoot them at me, Meredith. What do we got? Yes. So um, Tori had raised her hand with a question. And um, Tori, that question, sorry, I'm just coming. There we go. (laughs) There it is. Um, Kendra, Tori would like to know where we should be applying for jobs. Are there are there platforms other than LinkedIn and indeed are there other places that we can be um, that she could be applying to? Yeah, absolutely. So this is this is a little bit of a rabbit hole. I'm not gonna lie. This is what makes the job search kind of hard is that there are a lot of places that you can go and apply. So what we've learned, because we sit on both sides of the hiring table, right? We sit with companies and we also sit with job seekers is that sometimes companies don't know where to advertise their jobs. So they're kind of finding the most affordable or the most known spot for them to advertise a job. So now indeed.com is a place that a lot of employers are using now, not a hundred percent of them, but indeed is a great place. LinkedIn for some jobs can be a great place. Now you got to know that LinkedIn is actually really expensive for employers to buy. So for us to post something up on Indeed, it's actually a lot of money. So not every company has got the budget to do that. So they might not all use LinkedIn, for example. Craigslist is still a place that some companies are using. I don't recommend you spend a ton of time on Craigslist, but I do recommend maybe now and then you do a quick search up on Craigslist, depending on the field that you're in. There's also some other ones that are geared specifically toward college students or fresh fresh out of college grads. There's a couple job boards that are geared specifically for different industries. So um, as we're working together, I'd love to give you some other ideas more specific, Tori, to what you're actually looking for. So because we know a lot about a lot of these job boards, but Indeed is definitely probably the most popular one. And Meredith, I don't know if you want to add anything on to that. Well, you could simply do a Google search. Um, In your browser, search Google for jobs for whatever role you're looking for. And then you could potentially create an alert in Google. And every time a new job comes up, um, that it it will alert you that you have some new jobs to check out. So I would love to share that with anyone that wants to jump on a call one-on-one. Um, I can do that. Um, but great question, Tori. Really appreciate that because there are a number of places you can be looking and um, and uh, LinkedIn indeed are good for sure. But um, let's move on to Brad. Um, Bra- I'm sorry, Brady. Brady um, is asking, what is your best advice to someone that knows their skills and experience but isn't sure of the specific roles that fit them. Hmm. Yeah. So that's 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 a challenging spot for you to be in, Brady. I'm sorry because it's got to feel a little bit overwhelming. You know, you've got this gift to give, but you're not quite exactly sure where to go with it. So this is where I think a little bit of coaching could be really helpful. Honestly, uh, as I said earlier, like Meredith and I know a lot about a lot of jobs, and so we can oftentimes find and help tra- use take transferable skills and spread them across a few different industries or a few different ideas. And so I would love to just have a deeper conversation with you about that. Um, and if you want to, in the chat, actually share a little bit um, more around like what, what those skills are, we might be able to even think through some of that right now. And there might be some other people on this call that could benefit from that. So if you feel so inclined, maybe throw it, throw into the, the chat, a couple of your, your, your skills or your background, and we can maybe riff on that for a minute. Awesome. Um, let's move on to Alyssa's question. Are cover letters effective in increasing your chances of an interview invitation? I can answer this one. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I want to, I want to share just, yeah, let's both do this one because it's a great one. So cover letters are so interesting to me. So when I was doing a lot of recruiting, I didn't find myself really reading the cover letter until I was close to picking a candidate to interview. And so if I got down to where I had, let's say 10 different candidates I was looking at, then I would be curious and go to the next level and actually read their cover letter. But here's the nuanced part of a cover letter is it's got to be relevant. It's got to talk about your your work history and why you're passionate about working for that particular organization. A canned cover letter? Yeah. I mean, if it's required by the job advertisement, you obviously have to do it. But the more energy you put into a cover letter without it being overly wordy, the better. And as a hiring manager, it makes a huge difference. And so when I'm actually hiring for turning the corner for my team, 
the cover letter can make or break an interview. So I think putting time and effort into a cover letter, especially if it's a job you really, really want, is totally worth it. But what do you think, Meredith? Yeah. And one thing I want to say, if it is required, you have to include it. If it's not required and it's not um, something that you have to load up, there are times when I can tell you as a recruiter, I do not read their cover letters. It and especially one that's too long. So short to the point, sell yourself, sell yourself as to why you are the best candidate for this role and why you would love to work for the company. So you have to do some research there. Um, Don't, and like Kendra said, don't send a a templated generic uh, cover letter ever. It's not worth your time and it just frustrates the, the recruiter and the hiring manager, but great question. All right, next question. Um, Okay, so this is an anonymous uh, question. I don't like my degree, but I have zero debt. Is going back to right? (laughs) Is going back to school the most important thing in changing careers? What certifications are important? Ooh, that's a great question. So thank you for ever whoever it was. And by the way. Let me say too, like I know a job search can be something that you don't want other people to know that you're doing. You do not have to include your name on these calls ever. You can use your stage name. You can put Snoopy the dog. Like we don't care at all. So just so you know, like we want to protect your privacy on that for sure. So to answer that question though, um, I am, it's a nuanced answer. So the fastest way to get a new job is to do what you have been doing. Okay. It's just going to be the easiest way for people to see, oh, look at what this is, what they have been doing. And now this is what they are doing. We want to do like perfect match. The second easiest way to get a job is to do what you probably have been doing, but maybe for a different industry. So for example, if you're in sales for a, a payroll company, maybe you go and be sales for um, a, an HRIS system. I don't know, but you know, it could be, it's like a similar industry or a tangential industry, really, really logical. Nobody's going to bat an eye at that, like totally make, will, will make sense. There are some exceptions to that, by the way. So that's not a hundred percent rule, but <clears throat> for the most part, the third way to get a job and one of the harder ways is to switch roles in the same industry. So for example, if you were once in sales and you wanted to move into marketing, mm, it's a little bit of a jump. So you might be able to do it. You can do it. But here's the difference is it's going to take an investment of time or money. So you might have to go back to school. You might have to go back and get an education. I don't know what it will be, but or go get a certification. So that's when you start to have to think about it. But the reason it's still a little bit easier if it's still in your own, your current company, your current industry, is you have fans. You have friends and fans who are like, I can see why you'd be great at that. Yeah, yeah, I'll make a recommendation. So you just have a little bit more support and community around you if you're switching roles inside an industry you already know. The last way and the hardest way to get a job is to switch industries and switch roles. Now, it's not impossible. I mean, that's what I did, right? I wasn't a recruiter before I opened up Turning the Corner. In fact, I didn't know anything about recruiting at the time. I had to learn it. And so, um, so, but I, but the reason I you say it takes time is that by no means was I making the income that I had been making at IBM, you know, on day one. So it just takes an investment of time or money. I don't think you should go back to school though, just to go back to school. Like I would want to explore that more in depth, more deeply with you because we've seen a lot of people both go into another industry without needing to make that investment and been totally successful at it. And also we've seen people spend a ton of money on a a degree and not get the benefit from it. So it'd be a question I'd want to go deeper with you on. Awesome. Love that answer, Kendra. Um, here's a great question. How do I tailor my resume for a different, for, for the different job applications? Oh, yeah. Okay, great. So at the end of this call, we're going to make an offer to you all to do this kind of coaching with you every week until you find a job for a very, very affordable price. And if we were able to on this particular call today, because if we had structured it a little bit differently, 
we would actually be able to show you this exact thing. So what we would do is we would bring up your current resume and maybe redact your name because I see you're an anonymous person. I totally understand that. So we'd redact your name and then we would look at a job advertisement. Look at it and we teach you how to read the job advertisement to then make the things that are relevant to you on that resume. It's actually not as hard as you think it is. Now it takes some time and some effort, but we'll show you exactly what you need to do. But the thing is this, and this is the message I want everyone on the call to hear, is you need to be tailoring your resume to every job you apply for. The equation for this is, I mean, people ask me this all the time, how many versions of my resume should I have? It's N plus one, where N is equal to the number of times you've applied for a job, and the plus one is your master resume. Okay, so you take your master resume and you tailor it to a job. You rename the new resume as your name, the job you're applying for and the company so that you remember. And then the company sees you put this additional effort into it too, which is so cool, but really it's so you can keep track of which resume has been what. And so, um, but you absolutely want to be tailoring it to every single job you're applying for, for a number of reasons. One reason is it just makes you relevant. And so when Meredith and I get a resume, we open it up. And the first thing, I don't know if you do this, Meredith, but I do, especially when I'm really busy, First thing I look at is I go straight to what have they been doing and is it aligned with what I'm recruiting for? And if they were applying for, uh, again, let's just use an example of sales and marketing. They were applying for a sales job, but they have been a marketer. I'm going to have a tough time understanding why they applied for the job. There's some overlapping skills, but I'm going to have to take the time to study the resume to see why. Versus it maybe being really clear to me on why they've applied for that particular job because the role has, because the, the resume has been tailored. You might have a ton of experience working with sales, supporting sales in a marketing role. And I just don't see that quickly on your resume. So you absolutely have to tailor the resume. But the second reason is because of the bots. Oh my gosh. So believe it or not, Lucky me, my job at IBM was to write these bots. So I know way too much about all this stuff. So they're not very smart. So um, basically what they're doing is they're they're chewing up or looking at a job advertisement and they're pulling all the keywords, maybe comparing it to a database of jobs. And then they are looking at your resume, chewing that up, doing word count counts, and then comparing. And the more comparisons there are the, and the more likes there are between the job advertisement, what the bot thinks, and your resume and what the bot thinks, the higher ranked you are by that bot. I'm so sorry that this is happening. It's making us totally crazy. The bots are ruining the job search. So we have to kind of figure out how to still let the humans and the bots like the resume and tailoring is a great way to do that. 100% agree, Kendra. Um, and there are some other tips and tricks that I have up my sleeve to help with that. And I can't wait to, uh, to help um, everyone in real time when we have that time. Um, but let's move on to the next question. Um, the most common interview questions um, I should prepare for, what are they? Okay, so tell, there's, yeah. Sorry, I was no, gonna go say, tell me about yourself. Yes. Yeah. The icebreaker, whatever the opening question is. So tell me about yourself or tell me, I mean, my question I always ask is what's, tell me about yourself and the arc of your career. Keep it framed a hundred percent around work. In my early days of recruiting, I remember asking more generically, tell me about yourself. And the gal I was interviewing was like, went off and talked about how much she loved horses and she had this farm. And I'm like recruiting for an accounting role. I'm like, I don't, I mean, it's awesome that you love horses, but ah, we've got 20 minutes here. Stay focused. So, yep. Tell me about yourself. It's a good one. What's another one that you have, Meredith? Um, let's see. Um, you know, I was just going to say, um, if you are going to answer that question, tell me about yourself. You have to tell me why you are the best person for the job. That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear about your horses. I want to hear why you are the perfect match for this role. And so, but another question is, why do you want to work here? Yeah. Or, and then another one that may or may not be a relevant question for you is why did you leave your last job or why are you leaving your current position? You got to be ready with a quick answer. Like I actually teach people and work with people to just memorize a 30 to 45 second answer so that you don't ramble on and on and on and potentially make the hiring manager 
raise their eyebrows. You don't want anyone to raise their eyebrows while they're interviewing you. So, um, so yeah, you got to practice that. Um, the other one that I think is a question that please don't, don't, um, get upset with me, but it's a, it's a stupid question. And so if you hear this question, just know that you're interviewing with someone who is not a very skilled interviewer, most likely, but the question is, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? Those are dumb questions because we all have strengths and we all have weaknesses. And all it does is make people nervous. And so, um, but if that's an answer you get or a question you get, I mean, obviously you've got your strengths because we're going to work on that with you. Then the weakness question, do not be glib. Do not be weird about it. Don't say like one of my well-meaning competitors says, oh, tell them that your weakness is chocolate. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's not a very good answer either. I think this is an opportunity for you to actually weed out culture. So for example, if you asked me that question and I was interviewing for your job, I would say, well, I don't like to be micromanaged. I don't like to be told how to do my job. Like I feel like I'm a good worker and I know how to solve a lot of problems. And so if I'm micromanaged though, I feel like I'm not being trusted and I don't like that feeling at all. So I'm not saying it's a bad week. It's not like, I mean, that's reasonable, right? I don't want to go work for somebody that's going to micromanage me. You couldn't use that answer, by the way, if that fits for you. But um, so so I, I other competitors of ours will recommend that you take like a quality of yours that's and then take it to an extreme. And we used to kind of recommend that as well, but I just don't feel like it's real. Like, oh, I'm a, an overachiever, whatever. So, I mean, you know, it just doesn't come across the way you want it to in an interview setting. So I use it as more of a culture question. So, yeah, so... Tell me about yourself. Why did you leave this job? Why do you want this job? What are your strengths and weaknesses? And then the last one is, um, what's your salary requirements? Luckily here in Colorado, if you're in Colorado, it has to be on the job advertisement. So you can just say, well, what you, re what you put in the job advertisement totally works for me. That's fine. Or if you need to go deeper around the salary requirements, it's a bit more of a nuanced answer. So, but you wanna be ready for it because otherwise you kind of stumble over it in the interview. And then just one more thing, practice your answers. Yeah. So if you jotted those questions down that we just offered up, I suggest um, crafting your answers and then practicing with a friend, a family member, or even in front of the mirror. Mm -hmm. Or record yourself on your phone. Listen to it. None of us really like to listen to ourselves, but get over it. <laughs> you got to get a job and a job you love. <laughs> um, Donna has a great question, Kendra. Um she asks, what tips would you offer for networking if you are changing fields? Yeah. So if you're changing fields, um, and I'm going to assume it's a similar role then. So here's what I would want you to say when you're networking is I would want you to say something to the, so again, when people say, so Donna, what do you do? Well, you're going to want to answer it. I don't know you, obviously, at all, but you're going to want to answer it with something that's intriguing and interesting. So you might say something like, oh, gosh, I've spent my entire life in technology sales, and I I have loved it. And right now, because of all of the turmoil in technology, it's feeling like it's a good time for me to consider using my sales skills in another area. So I'm actually actively on a job hunt right now, targeting other sales roles in the food and beverage industry or wherever you are networking. I don't know what it is. I completely made all of that up. And if I'm even somewhat close to you, your background, please don't think that I'm freaky. Okay. It was just completely accidental, but, but that you, with, with that 30 second commercial, you've made it now a little bit more interesting. Like I feel enthusiastic about you because you loved sales makes sense why you're transitioning. Right. And also you help me know that you're on a job hunt. And so since you're on a job hunt now, if I, I'm a helpful person, which I am, then I will be able to say like, oh, well, have you thought of, did you, you know, my brother-in-law works, my blah, blah, blah. Like the conversation will continue and you'll probably get a great potential network connect, networking connection out of that particular person. Anything else you'd add on to that, Meredith? Well, I would first start doing some research on some um, networking groups or um, events happening in the area for whatever industry you're looking to move into and see if you can, um, you know, find yourself there. Um, just to even be a fly on the wall, 
to start to feel out the type of people that are going to be there and to start to feel a little bit more comfortable with yourself. Um, for example, I know Denver Startup Week is coming and I know um, it can be um, a really neat place to network with a lot of different kinds of people. Um, there's all kinds of um, online networking that you can do as well um, through LinkedIn. And, and so take, take, take each step at a time. Don't feel like you have to come away from every event with, um, a, you know, a book of, of people's cards and, you know, just set those expectations. Um, it can be really exciting. Mm -hmm. So Great. thanks for that question, Donna. Um, next question we have from Ali, is it, uh, um, Asia? Um, all my work is seasonal in the summer, which she loves. Um, I am in the need, I'm in the need of gig work for the fall, winter, and spring. Where do you recommend I look? Hmm. Well, I guess it depends on what type of gig work you're looking for. Um, but I know there are a lot of great niche, uh, job boards out there that are specific for gig work. Think, um, Upwork think um what are some of the other ones Kendra um, um there's thumbtack which is yeah. geared toward kind of um skilled labor there's also um a lot of different job boards specific for different industries so um depending on what kind of seasonal work you're doing so if they're if you're doing seasonal work in the mountains there's actually whole communities for seasonal work for like re resorts and resort work. Um, so I would Google that actually. Uh, yeah. And I actually just got a comment from a colleague here telling me that gig jobs is an app, an actual app. Yeah. So check that out. Great. Awesome. Um, okay. Wow. The questions keep coming in. I hope we um, can get to all of them here. Next one is, uh, what are some ways to make yourself stand out after you've submitted the perfect application to the perfect role that you're qualified for? Oh my gosh. Okay. So this is such an overlooked thing. So thank you for asking this question. I don't know why, but we get so afraid of rejection during this process that we actually stop thinking about what might be happening on the other end of that per for that person's life, you know, who's, who's actually going through all these applications. And so just not to make you feel bad for Meredith and I, but let me just tell you a day in the life of a recruiter. Um, when we put a post, post a job up on wherever, LinkedIn or Indeed, there have been times where we have gotten hundreds, hundreds of applicants. Like, honestly, it's too much for one person to manage. So the one way you can really make yourself stand out is to reach out. I mean, I have no problems having someone reach out to me on LinkedIn and say, I see you're hiring for a recruiter role. I would have been a recruiter. You and I are connected through so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. I would love to be considered for that particular role. For By all means, like I'm going to pay attention to that. I'm going to go paw through and dig through my database and I'm going to find you and I'm going to look at your resume and I'm going to say, wow, they took an ex extra time to reach out. Like I personally love that. Now, here's the caveat. That's me. And that's Meredith. That's what we love. Like we like that. Not everybody is going to be okay with that. And you know what? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Your extra effort will will definitely come back and help you down the road. So if you end up meeting or reaching out to someone who's like, don't bother me, just say, oops, sorry, and move on. That is not the norm, though. I think most people are happy and fine to have you reach out to them. But what do you think, Meredith? 100% agree. I can't tell you how far that goes with me personally, when someone takes the time to do the research to discover who might be the recruiter. Or let's say it's a smaller organization that doesn't have someone on their team with the recruiter title. Look in look for the hiring manager who might be that hiring manager and this is where linkedin comes in so for such a great resource you're going to go to the company page you're going to look at the people on that are part of that particular company and then you're just going to maybe guess you will and, and let's say you don't actually find someone that looks to appear to be the hiring manager for this particular role um reach out to someone that maybe is a second degree connection to you and say, hey, we have some similar connections. 
Um, I am very interested in this opportunity and share the link, let them know what it is um, and, and say any chance you'd be open to uh, connecting me with someone there or maybe answering a few questions about the culture. How do you like working there? Those kinds of efforts make big differences. And so don't be afraid and um, put yourself out there for sure. All right. So let's take uh, one more quick question. And then I want to make, I want to share with everybody kind of what we could be doing ongoing with everybody. Okay. I am going to take um, this one, this next one that's in order. Um, so please, if you have other questions, don't hesitate to reach back out. I'm ready to change careers. I just don't know what to do next. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I mean, it makes sense. And if you are ready to change careers, I think you would benefit a lot from having some one-on-one -on -one coaching. So we can hear your individual story and help you figure out what is the next best move for you. And, and make sure too, that you're going to be moving under a career that you actually are going to really like. So I don't want you to move into something that you'll still be hating that Monday mornings or feeling like you've you know wasted a year of your life or a couple years of your life. So in that particular instance, it might be worth it to, you know, do a little bit of one-on-one -on -one coaching. So what I want to do with you all now really quickly is I just want to share with you what we're going to be doing ongoing with you if you are so inclined. But if this was helpful for you today, then we want to keep doing this. Meredith and I have no problems whatsoever continuing to just give our time away or for the most part, give our time away. So what we would want to do is have a weekly session just like this. It'll be actually over live Zoom, though, not webinar Zoom, so that if you want to kind of build a bit more of a community and do some networking, too, you can. Again, if you are not comfortable with that, you just come in as an anonymous person or you put your your stage name in there. Like we don't necessarily we understand that sometimes it can be a confidential thing, but it'll definitely be where we'll be able to interact a little bit more, share screens, have each other kind of, you know, working on things together. Um, so we want you to bring the questions and then also we will continue to do this on the spot coaching. Now we might go a little deeper than we've gone today because we wanted you to get a taste of who we are and the breadth and the depth of answers that we're able to give because we know so much about this space. So we would probably ahead of time ask for people to submit questions and, you know, be able to you know, prepare a little bit more thoughtfully and go a little deeper. So for example, if we wanted to go and actually show you how to tailor a resume, we will do that deeper work. Work, or if we want to go and do a, more coaching around like the 30 second commercial, we'll do that with you. But I promise you, every one of you will learn from what the questions are that are being brought in by your fellow colleagues here. And then we also want it to be community. So um, I am totally, I'm amazed right now and a little overwhelmed, honestly, by how tough the job search has become. So, I mean, we have countless stories right now of people applying for numerous jobs, many, many jobs, and not getting callbacks when they were qualified, where if a phone call to a hiring manager or a quick email or a quick connect on LinkedIn can make a huge difference because there's an actual personal connection. And so we want this to be community where you guys can help each other as well as us can help. Uh, we can help you. So it will be a little bit more than just, um, you know, just us. It'll be us all working together to help each other out. And so with this, we are planning to do this every Monday at noon right now. That's the time that we want to do this. Noon Mountain Time will go for an hour. Ahead of time, you'd begin bringing your questions. Um, we also will then just continue to do this type of coaching, but go deeper. And then with this is going to be included a workbook that we wrote, Meredith and I wrote. It's that we've continued to refine and make better and better. It's a, we sell it on our website for $75. It will be included if you sign up with us. And what we're asking is that you sign up for a month at a time and the month and the price is only a hundred dollars. It's a hundred dollars for an entire month, so basically four weeks of this type of coaching, $25 every single week. And really it's almost you know less than that because you're getting this job search workbook too that'll help you a lot. And so we'd really, really like to see you on the call where we can go a little bit deeper with you and just give you even more of our time and our effort here. But to get you to a place where we know you're gonna, you're gonna be happy and you're gonna love a job. And we do get great results for our clients. We've been working with job seekers since day one. And so you can go up on Yelp, 
You can go up on Google. You can go up on Facebook. You can see tons of places where we've gotten feedback and we've helped a lot of people and we want to help you. We want to help you. So please consider that offer of $100. You can also just send us an email. We can get you signed up that way. Um, and if that timing for some reason doesn't work, let, you know, let us know. But I mean, that's what we've been hearing from people is a time that seems to be working. Any questions on that? We've got one question here. What is the job search workbook and what does it have in it? So the workbook is broken down into the five steps. So how do you know, it? how do you believe in yourself? How do you um, get clear on what you want to do? How do you market yourself with your LinkedIn profile, your resume, and your 30-second um, your commercial? How do you actually network as well? There's an additional whole chapter on networking. How do you rock the interview with the top five questions that people stumble over? And then the final piece of it is also some resume templates, some examples, some questions that you can, can maybe think about asking in the interview. It's just a bunch of tips and tricks. I think it's almost 80 pages long, 70 pages long. So it's a big workbook with a lots of spaces, lots of places for you to kind of fill in your own, um, your own answers and kind of think through things. So it's designed to be a working document. Any other questions on that? What well, we hope today has been helpful for you, and we just really hope to see you again and help you get through this really difficult time and know that you're you're not alone and that you have us. And if you decide after working with us and the on the coaching calls that you want to just do some one on work one on one work with us too, we have that as well, which we'll follow up and send you some information on that as well. But it'll be working with me and Meredith and other members of, of our team. So. Well, we hope this was helpful. Meredith, any final words? I just want to thank everyone for the great questions. Um, it's so fun to be able to um, share a little bit of our expertise with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you soon.